Hello, good evening and welcome to our front. My guest tonight is a man I last had physical contact one-on-one -on -one in studio engagement as far back as 2019. At that time, he was in charge of making sure that our accounts are audited properly. And he had a lot of big promises, cleaning up the system, making sure that people cover money, surcharging them, making sure that we had, as a system, that we are complaining about being properly monitored. I'm talking about former Auditor General Daniel Zhao Domlevo. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. I hope you are doing well. I'm very fine. Thank you. I'm, I'm coping because you've been difficult to get a hold of. It's only via Zoom once in a while. Then connections do go through. Yes. You have become way too busy for the liking of the people you used to serve. Yeah, because I don't serve them anymore. And when one door closes, you have to look for another door which is opened. So I will, uh, I've been doing other things. So. The accusation is that you joined the brain drain system, that you have deprived the people of this republic of your beautiful service. Yeah, well, but what, if your service or you have a good brain and is of no use to your country, why don't you make use of it somewhere else? At least you make some money for the country. Well, that's an interesting perspective, actually. Yes. I get that. So you want mm -hmm. the resources to be stacked in the country, not utilized. Mm -hmm. Unutilized capacity is a wasted capacity. I so get you. we have to deploy it elsewhere. Mm. I can see. And you are doing very well. Oh, yes. I mean, those of us who know you know that you came from elsewhere to this country. Yeah. You, you, were, you were perhaps in a very lucrative profession, abandoned for the Republic of Ghana. There's a question I sometimes ask you, then you dodge it. But do you regret that decision? I've always asked that question, that I have never regretted it. It is always good to be of service to your country. No matter what one becomes, or I become, what I become, uh, it is this country that made me. So it's better, or it's good, to always give back to your country. So going back to serve in your father's house mm -hmm. should not give you any cause of worry or regret, just because maybe something happened which is untoward. No, you should always be ready. Even if it's for less in terms of the trivialities, in terms of the ad additional things you get for doing the work? Of course, yes. Nobody can expect that working for the government, unless, of course, you join the stealing brigade. If you don't join the stealing brigade, there is no way the compensation government of Ghana will give you. It's the same as what the international financial institutions will give you. So you have to do a lot of sacrifices. And uh, if we don't sacrifice, I put it this way, some people even put their lives on the line so for us to get independence or get the peace that you and I will enjoy. Mm -hmm. So if you also have to sacrifice maybe some of your income or some benefits and contribute to developing the country, I think it is in a good direction. I get that point. Now, I mean, since you say you do not regret it, yeah. now there are things that were deemed impossible until you became Auditor General, like surcharge. But now, it's no longer happening. What was the magic wand you were carrying in office that you took away with you when you were leaving the office as Auditor General? Well, the, 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 I, let me say that before becoming Auditor General, one of my biggest worry or regret about Auditors General Mm -hmm. was the fact that they were not applying that sanction regime which the law gave them. When I say Auditors General, I'm not referring only to Auditors General in Ghana only, but there are several other countries that have got the same provision. And it's a trite knowledge that I was working for the World Bank, mm -hmm. so I was dealing with public financial management. And most of the times on the side, I would like to say, Chief, but the law says that whenever you come across any expenditure which is contrary to law, disallow it and say charge the people. According to your own report, there are several unlawful expenditures. So why are you not doing this? And uh, many times they tell you, no, Daniel, you don't know what it, uh, it takes to do that. And I say, well, okay. But if I were given the chance or the opportunity, I would definitely do it. So when the opportunity came, it was my, the first thing that came to my mind, that this is the time to tell people that public funds is not for stealing, is not for misuse. We must ensure it is applied for the intended purpose and give value for money to it. So 
<laughs> let's deter people who thought they can just play with our money. Fortunately for me, there was already even a case in the Supreme Court yes. brought about by Occupy Ghana, Ghana challenging the Auditor General for not exercising those powers. So when I came to office, I called them to my office and said, Look, guys, where are you in court? Because um, I am with you. Yeah. But if I were called into the witness boss at the Supreme Court, I was going to witness. support you. Yes. I was going to say that what they are saying is right. Mm. It is my duty or as an Auditor General to do what uh, we should do. But then, after a long de deliberation, we agreed that let the court settle it so that it does not become an issue of Daniel. That's true. So that it will be a decision of the Supreme Court which will be binding on any Auditor General going forward. So the decision came and all the judges, I think seven or nine, I've forgotten the number, unanimously said Auditor General was at fault. And I said, I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. I actually joked uh, by calling Ezan Kumar to say, if he had lost the case, I would have appealed on his behalf. I see. Because I think this is the right decision. And following from that, I thought, well, uh, it was time for us to bring that deterrence into the public financial management where people think they can appear at the public accounts committee mm -hmm. you people will give them publicity nobody even knew them they go on tv live and then tell us any story at all that support the, uh, the the infraction and at the end nothing happens i say no that is not going to be business as usual that's why but let me say that i didn't take anything out of ghana or the service or the office of the auditor general yeah their system and the people that i use i left all of them behind so what is happening i have no idea no, but that, that should be you, a court had given a directive clerk at the highest court of the land yes. has said you auditor generals ought to you can do this you can surcharge and disallow but the shock is that since you left office, it's not been happening. That to me is a big surprise. Why? Because I think the Auditor General is risking. This is my view. Mm. It's an opinion. And you've had the office of the President to say, because I'm not a lawyer, I don't have appreciation of the law. Thank God, Supreme Court supported my position against them. Okay. So I think I know the law better than them. So they should focus for some classes. Oh, I see. Uh, from Interesting. Me, uh, instance. Mm. This is my opinion. When there is an issue of interpretation or enforcement or application, and it goes to the Supreme Court, according to Article 2 of the Constitution, if the Supreme Court interprets and gives directives, and you don't comply, you've committed high crime. If you like, if you like check yeah, what yeah. Article 2 says. If it says high crime, that's high what crime. it uses, yeah. And so I don't know whether he is preparing himself to be cited for high crime, because you see, his report indicts him. His own report says that this is contrary to law, this is contrary to this, this is wrongful, this is that. And if you don't take the next steps to ensure that you obey the decision or the directive, in fact, it was consequential orders of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. If you ignore it and one day you are taking on, I don't know how it is going to be defended. Anyway, he has lawyers, maybe they've told him that in, in some cases it doesn't apply, maybe, I don't know. but. For the, to be honest with you, well, with all intents and purposes, I think that mandate is the most important mandate of the Auditor General. Otherwise, I kept telling my colleague, Auditor General, when I was in office, that if they don't exercise this right, you are not even as good as the journalist. You are just at the journalist level. Yeah, they, because we cannot call complaints. Yes, you, you, Can you do investigations? Yes, you do investigations. Probably expose the same thing. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I say you are just like behaving like journalists. After spending so much money doing professional work, you only come and tell us, see how much rot is in the system. Whilst the law mandates you, to take some action. The good thing about the law even, which gladdens my heart is that when I disallow the expenditure and say charge you, it is for you to challenge me, not mm -hmm. me. The law did not require like the OSP should go to court mm -hmm. to get permission to keep the things that, no. It says the auditor general when it says charges, I think clause 9 of article 187 says if you are not happy, you should rather go to the high court. So it is for you to go and challenge me. And when you feel that you don't have a, key, a case, how do you go to court to challenge me? So I don't really get it, but I think you may have to make some effort to reach to hear himself. Maybe he may explain to you the reasons behind uh, 
this uh, absence of this I have heard yeah. this being bandied about that well even in your case some of the decisions were overturned by courts there's no problem about that I've always told people that you see we have different stages of accountability mm -hmm. with my professional judgment and good intention I think what you did was wrong I gave you the opportunity, we raise audit observation, we issue management letter, and according to section 29 of the Audit Service Act, you have 30 days to respond to this. And the 30 days pass, like Crow and Associates. Mm -hmm. Osama mm -hmm. Mahfoud didn't respond within the 30 days. Mm -hmm. First, I remember the observation was issued in January 2018. And the response was, they are, they are going to come with the evidence, okay? Then a management letter was issued in March. 2018, they couldn't provide the evidence to clear the observation. I issued the audit report in June. Check, it is in August that Honorable Sabumafo now wrote to say that, oh, he's aware that people are working. I said, that's not the observation. The observation is that you violate the procurement rules and whatnot, etc. And again, where is the service delivered as a result of which you made payment? So the judge in her thinking, Justice Efia thinks that, oh, Osafu Mafu should be set aside, because, uh, set free, because you remember the case went to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And the Supreme Court, to be honest with you, when I read their judgment, I said, my goodness, thank God I'm not a lawyer, so I don't appreciate the law. So I can, I can agree with them. But the question which was asked the Supreme Court is not the answer they brought back. Justice Efia referred the case to the Supreme Court to ask, is this issues, uh, are these issues that of national security? It was to determine because the constitution provided that issues of national security, it should be the Supreme Court. Okay. Then the Supreme Court now instructed the acting auditor general, then now the current mm -hmm. auditor general, to go and see, in fact, I was the one instructed, but within five days, the president said should go and leave. Yeah. So the following day, within 24 hours, my deputy who was then acting or asked to act, which the Supreme Court said it was unconstitutional, yeah. now certified that he is satisfied with his findings, he has gone to see the work done and he's satisfied with it. And the Supreme Court before which his appointment was being challenged, mm -hmm. accepted those uh, findings and use it, send it back to Justice Fia that according to the Auditor General, uh, work done is satisfactory. So, she so was that question answered, the original question before the It court? was never answered. They dodged the question. The question is, is it a constitution? Because they knew it would attract additional questions. Mm -hmm. Because if they say it was uh, actually, uh, what do you call it, a national security issue, our follow-up question was going to be, when did it become a national security issue? Because when the audit observation was issued in January 2018, they never raised the defense of national security. Mm -hmm. When the management letter was issued in March 2018, they never raised the issue of national security. Even when Honorable Osafumafu himself wrote in August, there was no national, it was only when we came to court. Before, it, was, it was an afterthought. Mm than real. So they, I think they saw through and said, no, 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 we just dodged the, dodge the question. And uh, in their own uh, wisdom, they dodged the question and brought a different answer. And then they set the man free, which is OK. But to be honest with you. So you're not satisfied with the decision of the court? Well, I cannot be satisfied with such a decision. I thought the court didn't do well, in my, in my opinion. But they have the mandate so to do. So I can't challenge that. But if I were sitting there, I don't think that is how I would have decided the case. Of course, you were party to the matter, so exactly. clearly your side was known ahead of time. Exactly. But I mean, you, you brought in this uh, as an example, the crew associate one. Yeah. As an example, not long ago, the executive president of the Republic was saying, there's never a time an anti-corruption body has been put under pressure to do anything different. When you were in office, did you get the cooperation of all relevant state institutions? Well, to be very honest with you, in my personal assessment, when I was in office, I received significant cooperation mm -hmm. from all those who mattered. The presidency. But the, even the media, I thanked you for always being on my side. The civil society, the presidency, yes. Uh, when I came as the Auditor General in 
2016. You know, it was just about a week or so before yeah. the new administration came in. 2017, I received significant increase in budgetary allocation. And in fact, actually, money disbursed, not just mm. allocation, yeah. but disbursed. The amount of yes. you are actually giving the money. Yes, giving the money. Not the ones they say they will give. Yes, I followed and collected all. Mm. 2017, 2018, 2019, it followed the same pattern. I got significant increase in budgetary allocation. Hence, we were able to do uh, what we so wanted to do. So it is true when the president says he has given more money to anti corruption bodies like the Auditor General's office. That, that is factual. The government. That is factual. It is factual. That's factual. Yes. He actually gave us money not only for recurrent, mm -hmm. but he also gave us money even for capital. You remember the vehicles that were bought? Yeah. And Yoko was used to come in f after me, yes. which I have to go to the high court against them. Mm -hmm. You know, they lost that case, but it was silent. Oh, really? They lost the case. In fact, the judge said, I said it was unlawful. It was not only unlawful, it was capricious, arbitrary, and abuse of office. But those are standard words <laughs> used in law. That's what the, that's what when the, I read, yes. When I read it, I was like, oh, my God, okay. So next time, I'll pile up all those words. And, and okay, that's an interesting <laughs> development then. Yeah. Now, you've been Auditor General. Yeah. People are worried about the things not happening when you were, you were in office and all of that. That's why we came to this point about... Does it matter who is Auditor General? Or the office can run regardless of who is there? <laughs> this comes back to o Obama's case, that we need strong institutions, not strong men. But he has forgotten it is strong men who build the institutions. The institutions don't just grow like wheat on our mm -hmm. compound. Mm -hmm. It's somebody, a good man, or somebody strong who think the system it's not good, he has to change it and build a new system, make sure that it remains. So I think we have the law, which is very necessary for the system, and we need, we have the system, but leadership is everything. Really? Leadership is everything. Once you, you have a good leader, things can happen. And the same way, if you have a bad leader too, you can be sure of what will happen. I'm asking you this question because yeah. people do not think that we are progressing in the fight against corruption. There was some hope during your time, especially when all this surcharge and disallowance was happening. When you sit back, do you think we are on the right path when it comes to the fight against corruption? At least the president believes that he has done extremely well. Well, that is a self-assessment and you cannot fault him mm -hmm. uh, for it. I would be surprised if he would be honest to say that countrymen are filled in the fight against corruption. But in my candid opinion, uh, I don't think his assessment is very correct. He has done a few things which are okay. For instance, I told you about the budgetary allocation, mm -hmm. which is fine. But then if you support the institution to go and do the work and you don't take any action on the findings, I, I, I heard, for instance, the COVID audit report, yes. which came out in Malawi. Mm -hmm. Immediately, the president fired the minister who took some uh, yeah. portion of the money yeah. and said the police should go after anybody at all who mm -hmm. was cited in the report. So we must use say, the report. But it's not a matter of just funding the service or the office of the auditor general. And when the findings come out, <laughs> the president becomes the one who even defends the people who, who uh, are found. So, uh, so basically, which instance are you talking about? Is this still cruel and socialist? Or exactly. I, I, I still find it funny that you... I thought the, what the minimum the office of the president should do in all these corruption cases is to take a back seat mm. and say, okay, please, Raymond, you oh, have but, been mentioned. But recently, the president listed cases where it was investigated and they were cleared by relevant state institutions, <laughs> not by him in any way. Deploying any, any reference to being cleared. Who knows to him? Do you, do you believe the clearance? That was genuine clearance. My personal views get me into trouble, so <laughs> I want to hear your view on this matter. Exactly, I'm, I'm with you. I don't believe that the president was very objective and sincere with us. I don't believe that. Because, you see, Many times he even preempts the, 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 the investigation. Before the investigation, when uh, Honorable Cecilia uh, Abinadapa's case mm -hmm. came, 
nobody is finding her guilty of yes. anything, okay? And the investigation has not even been completed, mm -hmm. even before trial. But the tone of the letter from the office of the president. You mean the party says, I am confident like you that at the end of the day, your integrity whilst in office will be established. And I wish you the very best in all your endeavors. Good. This is the president's concluding words to Thank the woman you. who was leaving office it, as sanitation. Was it necessary? Was it, to me, it was unnecessary. It is his expression of confidence. Yes, but you don't have to express, because immediately you express that confidence. Remember, all this investigative machinery are under the president. No matter how independent you are, we have some respect for the presidency. If the first man, the first gentleman of the state is already taking sides or maybe expecting that nothing should happen, then are you surprised if nothing happens? But of course, we know in that case something is happening. But I will come to that point. Yeah. There is a there is a connecting point that I believe, and many in this republic may think you failed woefully. In yeah. one of your interviews with me, yeah. you told me you reformed the space of asset declaration. Yeah. You told me you produce a website. You proceed to make it easier, and also you think that the law, even for that sector, should be heavily reformed. You left office. That reformation has not happened. Should I also assess myself just as the president does? Oh, but we, this is why we know that you left office and the reformation did not happen. Good. Except if you but are But before person. going to office, yes. before leaving office, yes. first and foremost, some changes occurred. In asset we, declaration? Yes. We had declared, we, we had developed a software mm -hmm. for online declaration. It was tested. In fact, I wrote to the World Bank because I had worked in the World Bank. I know of the IT strength mm -hmm. in the World Bank. I wrote to my former uh, practice manager, please, can you bring your IT people to do quality assurance of my system for me? Okay. Because one of the things I feared most about it was that, remember, the law does not allow publication as at oh, now. Yes. Okay, good. So. If we do an online submission, there will be a database. Somebody can hack into it and then produce everything into the, put it into the public. Domain. Ideally, what would have been wrong with that? Well, the law does not allow it. In fact, if you I take mean, their public service. Excuse me, if you put law aside, I would have yeah. said it's fantastic. It's a oh, fantastic okay. thing. Mm -hmm. But then, currently, the law does not permit All right. it. I should not be seen as the one who is going it's breaking the law. Actually, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I was afraid of that. And remember, Several of the people, most, not several, all the people who will help me to enforce this law are supposed to declare their assets mm -hmm. and liabilities and don't be happy. If you took such a case to court, the judges themselves, they, they are supposed to declare their assets and they are corporate. And some, and some had not even done it along the line, I mean. Yes. So, so I was like, no, if we are not sure that this system has a database which can be intact, no matter what, we may run into trouble. So I thought about that and said, ah, but the World Bank has got a lot of funds and systems in place. Yeah. And I know they are protecting it. So let me appeal and see if they can come to my help. Fortunately, my request was accepted. They came and did quality assurance and said, Daniel, your system is fantastic. You, you can go. So we even did a test. I asked the staff of audit service who were qualified to declare mm -hmm. the assets to use the system for a test run. So we did that, and we were very happy to see the results, where you can attach evidence of the assets that you are declaring. You know, currently, they fill a form to and say, I right. have a three-bedroom house on plot number, so, so and so. No, this one, you could attach, uh, what do you call it, uh, the title deed or whatever it is, mm -hmm. the title documents, so as to have that evidence. Even if you like, you can take picture and put it on their system so that we can see. Because, you know, one of the things I was worried about why I was developing those systems was the fact that uh, people may do anticipatory declaration, you know. Mm -hmm. Since you, you, are, you have just been appointed <laughs> a minister, you say, oh, before leaving office. I'll get five houses. I'll get five houses. So, so you, you come declare, and write five houses. You declare the five houses and then... Then in office you'll be filling the holes. Yes. So when you leave office and you've gotten uh, six, you say, oh, since I've been in office, I've got, I added there's one. only one. There are many, the other five, and uh, the five were there before I came, and this is one. I borrowed money from here, and that less it. So I thought that database should be very uh, secure. And we, we did that. Again, let me say that declaration was very low. You remember that I was putting it in the press. Yeah. And I even made it, I think, 2019. 
as the first item to be checked by the auditors when they mm -hmm. went out for the audit. The first question to the chief executive and the people is, thank you, you want us to audit you, but have you declared your assets? Yeah. Give us the evidence. So it pushed a lot of people to, to, come, do, the uh, to do the declaration. But to be honest with you, still, it doesn't meet uh, what is expected mm -hmm. because uh, there, there are several key uh, missing links in our assets and uh, liability declaration uh, scheme. One, uh, what the practice is or has been in the form of filling a form and giving it to the Auditor General, I think the law should have gone a step further to mandate the Auditor General to verify, not all, but selectively. Okay. So you will know whether you would, or you know audit, we don't do uh, uh, census. Everything. Okay, we, yeah. we, we normally take samples. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it can be five of you, I choose three and say, look, I'm going to verify. And since you don't know whether you'll be chosen one. or not, yes. you will be more you sincere. Yeah. So that verification, I thought, was very, very necessary, which is not in the law. Secondly, the Auditor General is not a god. He is not god. He is a human being. There is no way Auditor General can know all these public office holders, their assets and liabilities. So he can easily be lied to. So if you, re you, you remember, Office Holders and Political Parties Act 1992, sorry, not law, rather, not yeah. act, it was PNDC law, yeah, PNDC 1992. Law. It required the Auditor General to publish the assets declared within two weeks. Mm. Then we came with the constitution and at 550 and, we and watered it down. <laughs> and we and even it a down. punitive measure for the people who are not declared. Thank you. So it even had punitive measures. And all this has been removed. But to be very honest with you, this is my candid opinion. Uh, if I'm wrong, forgive me. But I think Commissioner for Human Rights and Administrative Justice and his team have not helped as a declaration at all. Really? In my personal view, the Constitution under Article 286 said declare before you hold public office. So if we find Raymond sitting in the public office where he's supposed to declare, he has not declared. To me, you are occupying that office unconstitutionally. So the logical thing for them to do is to say vacate your office. Remove people, including the judges. Say vacate. Trust, can they do that? No, I'm saying that that is what I would have gone for. Mm -hmm. And let the Supreme Court interpret. Oh, okay. I see. But that is what I thought they would have done. I would have hit you. I would have said, come out of the court. You are no more a judge because you are occupying the position unconstitutionally. So you appeal against me and then we go to the Supreme Court for the Supreme Court to tell us whether if you violate the Constitution and you are sitting there. The Constitution that creates the office. Can yes. you occupy the office? And say, before you, you go there, mm -hmm. wear black coat, uh, suit, and tie, mm. and you entered without it, have you not violated the Constitution? If yes, then should we allow you to continue sitting there? That, that's an interesting point. That, is, that has always been my view, but you saw how they were giving time to the electoral commissioner, to the judges, mm -hmm. as the parents who they have been giving additional time. I yeah. say, what is this? And later on, they did it. Yes. But there's a question, though. Yeah. Do you, as former auditor general, get shocked that it is possible to have public servants have so much money at home some have so much resource to the point that they can even in their wells, and we know what happened when Sir John died, share state resources like parts of uh, uh, Atimota Forest and coal. Does it shock you? Does it expose a certain big problem in our country that we can bury money at home, we can hide them in corners, and it's almost difficult to justify it. Exactly what is the problem with our system allows all of these things to feather? Yeah, my answer is yes and no. Uh, yes, it shocks me because it, I, I get surprised how people can think of getting away with all that. It's like we've given you food for the child, you have taken the food, including the ones in the storeroom, everything, mm -hmm. and you think the owner or the madam of the house or the man of the house will not know? Is it not evident that mostly we don't look up for those? Yes, that so that is that is a part of what shocks me. I'm, I'm talking about the individuals. Mm. It shocks me that you can you can do such a thing and think you will get away with it. That is my the shock. But it doesn't shock me because there are no consequences for wrongdoing in the public service.
Really? More or less. More or less, it is the, the, the consequences are there only when you are not part of the team. If you are not part of a particular group of people, yes, you can be removed or sanctioned rightly or wrongly. The sanction will come, despite the fact that it may not even be right or fully investigated. But there are several accusations against senior officers in the public service, and you don't see any seriousness uh, with it. And that doesn't surprise, it does not shock me, because I keep em emphasizing that to ensure that there is judicious use of our resources and the resources being used for the intended purposes, it is not the if me system. The give me. The give me system. Okay. It is not the system. It's the consequences of abuse mm -hmm. that would deter people. Because that's what the give me oh, system. Oh, I just told that. They didn't use the give me system. Yes. And that's it. Yes. It is even reported. Mm, and yeah, that they didn't and use I had it. some uh, uh, excuse. Uh, I forgot what they said. They said light went off and mm. uh, they had and to go to funeral. Yeah. They had to go to funeral. And I was like, my goodness. And took money to go and spend. Yes, and go and spend. And yet you couldn't go through the system. Yes. Meanwhile, the law says clearly that if you don't spend through the system, it is unlawful. And approval is done through the system. Yes, it's supposed to be done through the system. And there are some checks on the system. Mm -hmm. Did you do the procurement and what not, yeah. etc. But if you are going manual, manual will not ask you whether your procurement has been done and etc. So you can just use the money for any purposes. So until we go back to those soft issues, to say that once you cross the line, we hit you because it's a no-go area. Public fund is for public fund. It's money to be used for the benefit of the public. If you can't account for it, if you abuse it and you are found out, irrespective of who you are, and I was listening to Lin Kuan Yew about the fight against corruption. Mm -hmm. He said it's a waste of time trying to look for the small flies. You, should, you say you should start at the top, and I agree with him, because in public financial management, it storms at the top and drizzles at the bottom. Okay. I hope you understand that I expression. You. Yes, yes. If, if you want to solve the problem, you'll be wasting time going to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Because look at the budgetary allocation or disbursement to Ministry of Health or Minister of Education, or Minister of Agri, is huge. Yeah. Well, go to the health center and see how much arrives there. It's very it's little. It's very little, yeah. So you shouldn't waste your time looking at them. And by the way, if you hit the man at the top, all the, the people... will descend down. Exactly. Mm. So you don't waste your time. But Ghana, what we do is that we look for the small, small flies, and uh, if you are uh, unfortunate to go and steal cassava and they get you, the judge will punish you seriously. But people who embezzle billions as a result of we all dying our, at our hospitals, our roads are bad, etc. Their they, they, their cases never get heard or they are set free. I know you are close to the former special prosecutor. Yeah. I know that you are in close contact with him most of the time. There is a new special prosecutor. Yeah. Do you think he's delivering on his job mandate? Well, I have not taken time to assess him. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep hearing of him uh, from time to time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I am very happy of what he's doing. Sometimes I'm like, what is happening here? For instance, when about two weeks ago or thereabout, I heard that he went to court and the court said, he had assist, uh, exceeded the time he that should have come to the lot, court yeah. and said, ah, so didn't he know? Didn't he know? I'm still not a lawyer, eh? okay. so forgive me. But if the law say from the day you cease, you don't need to finish seizing everything before you go to the court. Mm. So if I seized these two chairs and I realized that it's left with a day or two, I ran to the court and said, look, so far I've seized two chairs. Give me the permission to keep them. Meanwhile, my investigation continues. If I find additional uh, tables and chairs, I run back to the court and say, I found these ones also. I don't know that whether there's a limit on the number of times you could have gone to the court. I was a bit disappointed. But two, uh, yesterday or two days ago, again, I, I consider, oh, it seems there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, he's gone back to he's court. He's gone actually. back to court with uh, a Further lot and more. better particulars, he believes. Exactly. So that is how it is. That's why I will tell Ghanaians that the, 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 the judgment at times, let's hold on a bit and look at the person. Okay. Because we are all fallible, we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And most of the times, like my case, I, I can sympathize with him. Because this is the first time we have a, a, that office.
So that office has not got that track record experience, there are no precedents to, to follow. Just like in my case, when I was disallowing and saying charging, mm -hmm. I was looking for precedences even outside our jurisdiction. And you're not getting any. I was not getting. So I said, look, uh, there's always somebody who must be the first to do the thing. Mm -hmm. And I keep telling my, my staff, don't be demoralized. We are learning. When we get to the court and they tell you we didn't do this, when we come back, we make sure that our next we'll one, we will do it. And we'll keep improving and we go. So by and large let's wait a bit and see uh, how it goes but i think he is okay and i will also plead with people who like to politicize his office to leave him alone you know ghana immediately you do something those in whose favor it is you are professional yes ethical mm -hmm. uh, transformational uh, uh, leader. leader good those who are against it <laughs> <laughs> so, look, he is a, a member of that party, mm -hmm. eh? and <laughs> it's funny many times when you hear that. Uh, but uh, uh, we should give time; we should allow him to do his work. I know you are you are auditor general, and your forte is mostly accounts, professional, what they call it, finance matters. Yes. But you think that when issues about other matters come to play, they are of importance to you, because I know that far back in December 9, 2022. You told the people of this republic that, I mean, uh, Article 71 must and that you beg to defer. Yes. There's a clarion call in this republic that says that this system where some people are treated specially is not something that we should support. But you disagree <laughs> with the that, masses of this country. That is not the making of Article 71. Okay. People don't understand Article 71. To me, at this, at the, in fact, many of my friends who normally criticize Article 71, I give them a piece of paper and say, write the amendments mm -hmm. which you think should happen there so that it will become a, a better one. I mean, the third yeah. theory is that any system yeah. that creates a different salary structure for a specialized group of people is unacceptable. Fantastic. But first, let me draw your attention to something. It flies in the face of Article 17, principles of non-discrimination. Yes, mm -hmm. but it is the same constitution which provided for the 71. Yes. Okay. And it provided for some particular office holders. Okay. And I completely agree with the public when they talk about the discrepancy mm -hmm. in the benefits in the remuneration system. Yeah. For, for instance, I have contact with some of my lecturers who have been lecturing in Legon for God knows how long. Huh? Yeah. Some of them have been professional accountants and as a terror for God knows how long, and they are still lecturing. You see their salary, and you compare it to someone just who have just won election as a member of parliament. Immediately, his salary is about three or four times. And I'm not saying that the jobs are the same; they are not the same. But there must be equity in it. Mm -hmm. Say that one does not regret serving the same government in a different But position. that's the foundation Wait for the call against Act 71. Yes, but that is not the making of Article 71. The Article 71 did not discriminate. All that the Article 71 did was to provide a framework okay. for determining the salary and the benefits of those office holders. Article 71 never stated anywhere that for every year that we have served, you should be paid a two months salary or three months salary. If you mm -hmm. see, it show it to it's me. It's a committee that determines no, you, that. If you see it in the constitution, call me we know and I will pay you. That. Thank you. So all that the constitution says mm -hmm. is that the president should appoint a committee of not more than five yeah. who will come out with those recommendations. Mm -hmm. So the people I blame are the, the committee who think that, well, we are determining the benefits, salaries and benefits of these people forgetting that they are operating within a certain environment. The first thing they should have looked at is how are the others paid? How much are they paid? And what are the salary levels in the country? So I know if you see that my post very yes. well, I explain that I blame the various committees and the various presidents and parliaments who approved their recommendations because the committee's recommendation was not final. It was a recommendation to the president or to parliament. So the president can say, no, I'm not going to approve this, and off it goes. Why do you like using these two words, kakistocracy and kleptocracy? <laughs> what do they mean, and who are you referencing when you use them consistently? 
Do I like using them? Yes. Why? Why? What, what How do many they times mean? do you see me use them? I, I've seen it five different times. Okay. I posted only once. Oh, I see other ones too. For example, on 30th of August, yeah. you were talking about coup d'etats. Then you said, surely, I mean, of course, you said this is to be expected when kakistocracy. Okay, so up. that's what I was talking about, coup d'etat. Yes, but, but still, you use the same, first and foremost, what do they mean? Kakistocracy and <laughs> kleptocracy. Well, these two words are very interesting, sis. Eh? <laughs> they are all sis. Yeah. Uh, kakistocracy is where people who are not fit for the job take over the job, maybe because of some uh, lineage or alliance or the relationship. Are you talking about presidency or all the types of Any office? job, any job. Do you think that your replacement was fit for the job? I don't have to assess you. Forgive me about that. I will not give a comment. You want that. to say yes or no? I you are not a timorous soul. You can stay boldly what I you I am think. not a timorous soul. That's yes. why I should be able to tell you that I'm not answering your question. Yeah, but so, I mean, so, you should be able to answer the question. No, I don't want to judge you. But some people infer that that's what you mean when you write kakistocracy. Well, I did not refer to kakistocracy in, in audit the audit service. service. I didn't say that. But do you mean... But actually, the kakistocracy, if mm -hmm. you remember my first posting, I just put the kakistocracy. The symbol there. That is all I wrote. But I, I mean, okay? I want to now, get to the bottom of it. In the second one, mm -hmm. the coup, coup details, details were happening in Africa, yes. our, our sub-region. Yeah, more recently, yeah. Yes. And I started hearing that uh, some governments were making reshuffling in the Changes. army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Changing generals. Uh, yes, and our president said we should pray for him. Yeah. And I said, my goodness, prayers and changes in the army will not prevent coups. What prevent coups is good governance. But then, these things are happening because we have people who are eating alone, not thinking about the public, uh, mm -hmm. and people who are not fit for the job sitting there. So people at a point in time say, look, you are driving the ship the wrong direction. Let's take over and it happens. So if we start respecting people's views, start treating people well, all Ghanaians are happy with how the economy is being run. And the soldiers will equally be happy. The police will be happy. Nobody will think about the coup. Well, Ghanaians are not happy. If they are not happy, that is where the revolt comes from. So immediately you see something like that. You should start doing things to make people happy is that good governance in ghana in ghana yes your judgment is as good as mine no, but in my judgment, view yeah in my view no we don't have good governance we are far from it what's we, the evidence okay when we are, when we, we want to talk about good governance or ethical leadership mm -hmm. i talked about if you remember the term you call father yeah is an acronym there must first be fairness the f there must mm -hmm. be fairness people should get the job based on not because of uh, some political lineage or tribal as, uh, association or whatever, etc. So it must be fair. There must be accountability. The leader must hold his followers, including himself, accountable and take responsibility when things don't go well, instead of giving excuses. There must be trust or transformation. Hmm? The leader must be trusted. People can look at him and say, this guy is leading us to the promised land, so we follow him. But when we can see that the leader himself doesn't know what he's doing, who is going to follow him? He's taking a walk. Okay. And human beings are the only factors of production mm. that can be 100% present and 100% absent at the same time. In fact, your guys can be here with you, but they are not with you. Yeah, they may they be disagree about, yeah. with you completely, and yeah. they are only planning what they can do to sabotage you. Okay. <laughs> they will be laughing, and you think that they, they are, are they happy. Are, they, yeah. mm. So there must also be honesty. If things are good, say it is good. If it is not good, say it is not good. There must be equality or equity in the sharing of things. And at the end of the day, there must be the R, which is respect for divergent views. Your view cannot be all of us, our view at all the time. Respect people and what they stand for. Even if you disagree with them, respect their views. You don't call them names and start treating them badly because they don't see things from your uh, point of view. That is lacking in the government. I have not seen that. Once you disagree, you'll be labeled. Once you disagree, you'll be attacked. It's, it's not the right. We cannot think the same. Even if you were twins or triplets or quadruplets, we're not going to think the same way. We should have our independent way of thinking. That's the essence of democracy. You basically are saying you disagree with the president when you say that he are fighting corruption strongly. There is proper governance happening in this country. Big yes. I disagree with him. Let's move on.
Now, I will move on to the other points that you've been raising, though. Now, when you mentioned this point to do with uh, what's happening, your very good friend, the Honorable former Senior Minister, the current uh, Senior Policy Advisor to the President, yes, yeah. Mr. Yaosaf Mafo, yeah. he says 70% of the problems in, in this country is caused by you, the Christians. I know you're a Catholic Christian. 70% of the problems with corruption and everything is caused yeah. by you, the, the Christian, in this country. That's true, right? I don't know. Has he got the statistics? But I mean, we have more than 70 percent of our population is Christian. I, I thought he said that seventy percent of us are Christians. He didn't say that seventy percent of the problems are caused by Christians. Okay, I so think maybe you misrepresented. Okay, maybe I'm, I'm misunderstood. Uh -huh. Okay, he said we constitute seventy percent mm -hmm. of the population, and yes. however, these things are happening. That I agree. But if you say 70% of the problem is caused by Christians, I need the statistics. The, the quote here is that, don't blame the government. Yeah. Christians are responsible for 70% of all corruption in the country. Including so him, right. right? Including him, Yeah, right? I think he's a Christian, <laughs> yeah. So, so that is it. But since but, when... But is it true? Excuse me, since when did we give... Because you are also blaming government, is it true? Wait a minute. Since when did it become the responsibility of the Christian society? To fight corruption in this country. Read article, I think, 25.8. I'm not too sure if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. It says that government should put measures in place to use the word eradicate corrupt practices and abuse of office. It's a constitutional mandate. It is a constitutional imperative for the, 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 the government. Now they are shifting. Because they have failed, they are looking for other people to blame. Since when? See, what would the church do to stop corruption? Because the people in government and the people in opposition, we ordinary people, we go to church, they should drum it down our thoughts. Yes. Deep so, within our minds so, that so, we should change our ways. Yes, I agree. But so that, we should not blame government, we should rather blame you, the Christians, rather. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. It is not the Christians' responsibility. They come in to supplement the government. Okay. To say that, look, my people, be of good behavior. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But then you don't fail and go and say that because they didn't preach to me well. That's why I beat my wife. Will you do that? Will you go home beating your wife and then when we say that you are busy, oh, it is the priest. The, the, I've not heard that in the latest sermon. That's why I did it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that cannot be an excuse, though. Yes. Are we progressing as a country? Yes and no again. Uh, if you look at the long term mm -hmm. where we were in the 70s up to today, I think we have progressed significantly mm -hmm. as a country. But if you look at the pace at which we are progressing, it's painfully slow and unacceptable. I actually have a, a, a nephew of mine. I, I hope you'll forgive me for saying this. Uh, I have not told him that I'll say it. He, he is based in Kumasi, near to Kumasi. I won't mention the village where he is, okay? And he seems that Ghana is doing very well. He, he even one day said... He thinks so? Yes. He said, Daddy, do you know, I'm not grown. I'm a young guy. But I saw Kumasi what it was mm -hmm. some years ago. Things have changed. I came to Accra. I knew how, what Accra was. Yeah. There's an interchange, etc. Thankfully, I met him in Addis Ababa. So I told him that, give me six hours, let me give you a tour of Addis Ababa. We didn't get anywhere. I said, wow, these guys are far ahead of us. And I said, Ethiopia? Ethiopia. Ghana? You can't compare Accra to uh, Addis Ababa? Well, maybe just infrastructure, but yeah. yeah. I'm talking about infrastructure about, development. Okay, I get you. In fact, he was already impressed even at the arrival at the airport. Yeah. When you read the airport, you see this is a village airport. Our uh, uh, terminal three. Our terminal three. Can you compare to that? Of, it. Can it be? No, it's fantastic. Yes. It's good. I, I'm not saying it's not good. Mm -hmm. But that, that's the village. But you're comparing to that's the, the village standard. Oh. When you are the champion in the village, if you come to city, you realize that oh, you are just a champion in the village. If you go, if you go to Addis Ababa and you see the airport, you are like, woo. This is an airport. So he went around, I went around with him, went to the uh, African Square where the AU mm -hmm. office was, and etc. And he was like, ooh, fantastic. He didn't know that there, there, there's a town like this. And I told him that next time, he should just go to uh, Abidjan, just here, Cote d'Ivoire, and go and see how Abidjan is. So if you don't travel uh, wide, you may be very happy with what uh, happens in your house and you think your mother is the best cook that ever existed. Till the day you meet another cook and say, Mommy, you have to go for extra classes. 
That is what is happening to us. We are celebrating what I call mediocre performances. Really? This is very mediocre. In fact, and if you compare, to be honest with you, if you compare the budget, I've forgotten the figures, like the budget of Rwanda to the budget of Ghana, there is no reason why Ghana should be like this. So many Eastern African countries, their budgets are about half or a quarter of ours, and they are performing well. If you are president, will you sack ministers? Why not? In fact, they are the first people to be sacked. In fact, to be honest with you, I said it to some people that, uh, thank God, I don't have any presidential abilities, so don't, mm -hmm. don't take me there. You don't have any at no, all? I don't, I don't you don't want to any. do politics at no, all? No, 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 I don't want to be in so the So who front. should do the politics you. and rule you? <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Go and seek advice. I will, I will give you the advice. I and, see. And that's, I told him that if I were president, since I have four years, I will sign performance agreement with my ministers and tell them that you have six months to justify your inclusion. Because I can't waste the whole year on you. So after three months, I will assess your performance and see whether I made a mistake employing you as the minister or not. And give you additional three months to amend your ways to become a high performer. Mm -hmm. But maximum by six months, I will have kicked you out and go for another one because kicking out you don't need approval yeah, <laughs> yeah that's need... true yeah <laughs> exactly approval when you're bringing new ones it's on only board. when you're bringing new one new one on board but they definitely there's a deputy he says you see how your your boss went be acting and you don't act well <laughs> you see what happens to you because we must hire and fire mm. people should not think that their jobs are rewards to them you are there to perform some public service we must Regrettably, this is my view, we must see people uh, crumbling or fighting to go into public service because they have some value to deliver. They have something to give to the country, not as a, 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 a means only of making money. Mm. To me, it is becoming an, the cheapest avenue for making money to my dislike. I mean, when I was coming, I was driving using the beach road. I reach a point and then the road was good. Then I entered another place. I'm saying, who is doing this nonsense here? It's nobody in charge. The road. Yes. Okay. I said, who is doing this? The, uh, the, from Labadi, okay. this is coming towards uh, the traffic light, which joins the road from the mm -hmm. trade fair. Mm -hmm. I look and say, ah. so how long does it take to fix this? You're on good road, and all of a sudden, you, if you don't take time, and in the night, I'm sure people may run into it and just go off. Say, so what is this? Heads must roll for non-performance, and we should reward good performance also. I'm not only saying that we should punish people, but those who are doing well, they should also be Let me rewarded. push you to the wall. If you are asked to recommend which ministries and ministers should go immediately, which ones would you recommend first? The Minister of Finance. He should go? Yes. The economy is in trouble. And I, I, when I, I, I saw uh, a group of uh, members of parliament asking for his dismissal, I thought it should be done. Okay. Yes, at least to give confidence to the system that, look, we are, we are serious. We want to get people who should go. But uh, he is still there. To be very honest with you. He was recently given a very nice position among WAMI, the West African Monetary Zone, and all of that. Is it the case that we are not seeing the person we have and others. Do you know what WAMI is? Is it not the same type It's of a monetary people? zone. Oh. They what, do, what do they monitor? They are, they are the best of the same feathers who are choosing the... <laughs> I don't want to say what They I, are ministers, I so that's a ministers of governance of, yes. No, Non-performing ministers choosing one of them to recognize what is it. It's like a group of idiots meeting and deciding that, oh, let's reward this one. And then WAMI is nothing. I know I've been dealing with WAMI since I was in Accountant General. So I know mm -hmm. of them. I've attended several of their programs in West Africa. So uh, the fact that they are a group of ministers, tell me which of them will you envy? Which of the countries? Is West African ministers tell me yes. that you envy this West Africa country because the Ministry of Finance is doing very well? Which the point I was making is that is this something that we probably are not giving credit to the man for, the man Nanaya Kuntun Kulunku of Oriata? for when you say he should be removed because the, the argument is that not that i i said he should be removed not because i have anything against him personally mm -hmm. what i'm saying is that at times you must make changes to give confidence to the system okay okay it's like we we all realize that uh, god forbid joy is going down then we are keeping the same leadership he, he is the one who represents the president
government uh, or the government in, in charge of managing the finances of the country. That's true. And things are not going well and people are complaining. One of the things you can do is to say, look, my friend, take the back seat. Let's get somebody else. So to tell the people that, well, you have... The president himself acknowledged that things are not going well.